In this video, I want to talk about the Robert Dilt's logical levels of change. This video is going to be very useful for you because as many things as I covered on this channel, I realized that the information can be very overwhelming. Today, more so than ever before, we need to have some principles to be able to govern the kind of information that we take in. In the world of business, personal development, success, there is an abundance of information and there's more so becoming available on the internet today than ever before. And that is going to keep increasing. Programs, books, seminars, trainings, courses, videos, audios, there is no shortage and it will keep increasing the volume of information. One of my key concepts is I always ask myself with everything I consume, how does this relate to my vision? How is this going to create what I'm looking to create? If you don't ask yourself a question like this, it's very easy to become overwhelmed by complexity, especially when it comes to learning. Now, the Robert Dill's logical levels of change is a model that has been around for a long time, but I believe nowadays more than ever before, it is very important to help you create the kind of success that you want, whether it's business success, health and fitness, whatever area of choice, you can create success to a higher degree and faster using this very simple model. This has been a foundation of the hundred plus coaching clients and consulting clients I've had over the last few years, the foundation for my training programs and my own personal growth and development, and even leadership. When I bring others onto my team and I lead others, I use this model to cultivate entrepreneurs, to cultivate successful contributors towards the result. So I want to discuss this model and I want to dimensionalize it. I want to give you different ways you can apply it so you can really understand the value and the power. Now on the surface, this looks very simple. It's just a pyramid and there's six layers to it. You got vision, identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and environment. If you want, you can, you know, go and study the origins of this model from Robert Diltz and just learn about the various applications for it. And what I'm really going to share with you is my own personal applications for my successes in my business, my personal life, and that with my clients and so forth. So on the top, we got vision, okay, vision, what are you part of? Vision is something you're looking to create, whether that's business success, health and fitness, you have a goal and imagination, your ability to choose consciously what you want to create is one of the distinct elements that makes you separate from any other animals in the kingdom of whatever earth. And so you have this ability to imagine in your mind of something you want to create. You could use a vision board, you could write a couple pages of the ideal day, whatever form you can imagine you can vision. And the vision doesn't necessarily just apply to you it could be the vision of your company it could be broad spectrum. Now, there's a lot of nuance to what I'm going to share over here, so I couldn't possibly cover it to the extent that I'd like to, but I'm going to give you as much as I can to help you grasp this and apply it. So vision, what do you want to create? Then you have your identity, next level down. These are combinations of values and beliefs and or elements of beliefs that are related to what we call the paradigm or the self-image. And a good book to read is Mal Maxwell Walt Maltz's book, Psycho Cybernetics. And the idea behind it is that you're governed by your self image. So this is not identity as in a title. It's not something you give yourself like entrepreneur, for example, it's who you are. There's a saying, you don't act attract what you want, you attract who you are. And you don't necessarily behave in the best possible way and produce results based on what you'd like to be, but rather who you are internally, deep identity level stuff governed by the subconscious mind. A lot of how we see ourselves is not apparent to us. This is where you usually have to work with somebody to help you understand who you are or increase your self consciousness, your self awareness and do a lot of personal development work on yourself so you can identify within yourself how you really believe yourself to be And a good starting point is Maxwell Maltz's book. I did a discussion on it, I put a link in the description. So that stated, you've got your identity, deep identity level, not necessarily what you call yourself, but who you are. 
And the goal is to be in alignment with your vision. So if you want to create success in your business, for example, and your identity surrounding money or whatever else is off, then there's going to be a lack of congruence. We want to create congruence. So we want to evolve our identity. Next, you got values and beliefs. So values and beliefs to me is symptoms of your identity. How you believe reality to work is going to be determined by the influences, the different experiences you've had in life, and that forms your deep identity, your subconscious identity. And you could reveal to yourself about your identity by observing the kind of communications you have, how you talk to yourself and how you talk to others. That's why I really recommend that book. We did a discussion on what to say when you talk to yourself. I'll put a link in the description. Your values and beliefs create your reality. How you believe reality work is going to determine the actions you take or lack thereof, the optimal actions, or it's going to determine if you take suboptimal actions or actions that actually hinder your progress and set you back. Values and beliefs, very important. So we're looking to evolve our values and beliefs to be in alignment with our identity and our vision, the ideal identity. So we want to evolve our identity and our values and beliefs determine our identity. One of the things that I've gotten really good at is to be able to sit down with an individual and after 15 or 20 minutes of conversation with them, I could see how they believe reality to work by the choices of words, their topics of interest, and how they respond to various things that I would ask various questions, because that would determine to me their values and beliefs. And I'm able to connect the dots over to how they believe themselves to be at an identity level. And I'm able to check to see if it's in alignment with their vision. And the goal is to be in alignment. So think of it this way, your values and beliefs will determine your identity and will re reveal to you if you are in congruence between your identity and your vision. See, if you are in congruence, your identity is congruent with your vision then the rest of the stuff will seem to very easily fall into place. But if there's an inconsistency there, then it's going to be revealed to you in your values and beliefs. And this is where you'll have to work on evolving them. This is where we usually hire coaches, consultants, mentors to, to do the work within ourselves to help us do the work. Because what they do is they help us evolve our identity and our values and beliefs. The next is capabilities, capabilities. So these are skills conscious skills and unconscious skills, unconscious skills like walking. At one point you were learning how to walk and now you can walk and now you can talk to a certain degree. And that was because you were once learning the skill and now you've become unconsciously competent at it. So these are automatic capabilities that you have. And then there's more conscious developing of certain kinds of capabilities. So I always say this, if you want to become an entrepreneur, some of the most important skills you can have is direct response marketing, consultative selling and copywriting, as well as the five other things that I talk about, public speaking, language, communication, sales, marketing, which are very related. These are capabilities. You can dedicate a lifetime into cultivating these capabilities. Now, why would you want to cultivate these capabilities? Well, I'll speak from experience as a result of cultivating these capabilities, my results keep increasing. The success keeps increasing. My earnings keep increasing and so forth. So what are the capabilities for you? Now, this is dependent again on the vision. The goal is to identify the capabilities that are related to our vision that we want to cultivate and work on those areas, continuously learn, grow, and develop on those capabilities. And for each person, it's different. Even if you want to look at this from an organizational standpoint, different people, I'm talking about company organizations here, different individuals who are participating in this organization could be responsible for different kinds of capabilities. While there might be some overlapping capabilities, and for me, I recommend that everybody on the team learns about consultative selling and certain kinds of productivity-based capabilities. Next, we got behaviors. So your behaviors influence the environment. The last book discussion we did was on Atomic Habits by James Clear. I recommend you watch that video. I also did a discussion on the Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I recommend you watch that, as well as The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy and The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. These books help you with 
understanding and implementing proper behaviors to help you bring forth your vision. See, behaviors are going to be probably most likely related to the capabilities. The goal is to look at your entire day, and I cover this all in my productivity training, as 24 hours, and then what you do within that six and a half or eight hours or 10 hours you put in on your workday is going to determine the success that you have or lack thereof and the magnitude of the success. So we want ideal capabilities, highest and best use capabilities, and we want to do things in a proper systematic way, in a way that is going to produce results. You could run a marketing campaign, for example, and it could be a very optimal marketing campaign, or you could run a campaign and it's suboptimal, and obviously the results will show. You could show up, and the capability can be public speaking, for example, to speak, and then your body language can be off, your tonality can be off, and as a result, the, re the audience doesn't resonate with you. And if you're speaking to sell, then you might get less sales. So behaviors are elements related to capabilities. And they're even including things like habits. And then lastly, but not least important, and maybe even the most important, is your environment. Because guess where you get your identity from? It's your environment. So what's included in the environment? Well, your people, circumstances, economy, friends, family, customers, everything you do is done in an environment, and your environment influences you. So the goal is to pick ideal environments or evolve our environments and make it better or to identify how we're being influenced by the environment and make conscious decisions. So picking the ideal in environment and or evolving our environment. So now when you look at this from a broader spectrum, you'll realize that just about everything that you could do in business or personal development fits into one of these categories. And that's why I use this model. When I consult and I coach and even team build and do leadership uh, functionalities, I utilize this model to help me evolve the person that I'm working with, help them create the success that they want, help them become better at the contributions that they're making and produce success in their lives. Win, win, win. This is a great model because you can identify where an issue resides and, you know, obviously from there, you got to develop the skills to be able to resolve it. We're not going to get into the huge myriad of things that need to be done to each of these levels, but this does help ground us into areas that we can work on. So think about an area of your life that you want success in and figure out using this model and what I just shared with you right here, where you need to optimize, where you need to get better and the kind of resources that you need to bring in. Maybe it's a certain book, Maybe it's training, maybe it's mentorship, maybe it's consulting, maybe it's masterminding. What is it for you that you can evolve in not just one, but all these areas? The goal is congruence. You want your vision, your identity, your values and beliefs, your capabilities, your behaviors, and your environment to be in congruence. The goal is to bring your vision forth into the environment. Now, here's an important thing to remember. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to become more in alignment. This, you know, creating results in this world does not mean being perfect. It means doing just enough of these in alignment in a right level till you start to produce results and eventually bring forth the completion of your vision. Now, to dimensionalize these further, let's look at seven areas of application. So we got entrepreneurship and career. Let's run through this. So what do you want to create as an entrepreneur? What level of success do you want in your career? And for me, I always like to quantify it with numbers. What's the amount you want to learn or the quantifiable impact that you want to have? And who do you need to become and how do you see yourselves right now? And what do you need to do to evolve at an identity level? What are the values and beliefs that come up for you that are in alignment or not in alignment with your vision? You know, this is where it's always important to work with a coach or a consultant or a mentor or a peer group that can help you identify this because a lot of times what happens is that we have biases and we think the values and beliefs that we have is going to bring forth our vision. And if we don't evolve them, we're going to experience a lot of friction. We're not going to be able to create the results. So we have to evolve our values and beliefs. What capabilities do you need to cultivate as an entrepreneur? If it's a career and let's say you're a dentist, then you obviously need to cultivate the skill of dentistry and the sub elements of the various related elements of dentistry. You probably also need to learn how to build a practice and acquire clients and so forth. And the list goes on. 
what kind of behaviors, your ideal workday and how you go about acquiring business and servicing the clients and so forth is very important. And the environment, the location, where do you choose to have your office? Where do you choose to offer your services? Which part of the internet? You can even look at the environment as different platforms. You're watching this on YouTube right now, or maybe listening to this as a podcast or so forth. That's an environment. And my goal as a content creator is to ensure that you have a great learning experiences in the environment that you're in. Health and fitness. That's is also true for that. What's the vision? How do you see yourself? What do you want to create? Do you see yourself experiencing a certain result from creating a success when it comes to fitness? Maybe you're entering a fitness competition and you see yourself winning it. What's the identity that you have to take on internally to become that person and what needs to evolve within yourself. Maybe you don't see yourself as worthy or deserving. That will need to evolve. Values and beliefs, capabilities, health, fitness, workout, sleep, drinking enough water, behaviors, okay, choosing to go to sleep at a certain time, waking up at a certain time, eating certain meals at a certain time, going to the gym at a certain time, optimal practices while you're at the gym, and the environment. Being in an environment supports your goal. Same is to be said about learning and development. Okay, what do you want to learn? Who do you want to become as a result of that learning? And what are different elements that are within you that are preventing that identity level? What values and beliefs hinder your progress when it comes to learning? What are different learning modalities? And I cover a lot of them in my mind map training program that you can learn so that you can become a better learner. What about learning how to learn? Did you ever realize that that was an, a thing that you can study. You can learn how you learn right now. Perhaps it's something you want to develop, your ability to learn about yourself and how you learn and work on various learning modalities to help you learn better. Learning behaviors. Maybe there's certain times of day that you learn better. And then learning environments. Do you learn in an environment where there's a lot of distraction? Or do you learn in an environment that supports you and nurtures you and has access to a lot of resources within your reach to help you? Social skills, public speaking skills, selling skills, teaching skills even. I mean, these are all the areas that I've used the Robert Diltz model to help me create success and continuously use this. Why? Because no matter what I'm looking to create, I have a vision. And it's the identity within myself that I want to adjust. So I've got subconscious mind reprogramming and various different kinds of things, like taking in certain kinds of information to evolve my identity. Let's look at another example, public speaking skills, because this is something that I've worked on throughout the years. So my vision was to be able to articulate myself really well on this kind of content, to be able to do live events, to do group coaching and speak and do it from a place of influence. That was one of the core reasons why I created my communication training program, because it was a culmination of all my experiences as a result of this vision that I had. And then what I did was I evolved my identity. I had to first believe it was possible. So I had to surround myself with empowering information, books, trainings, subconscious mind audios to evolve myself to the point where I believe that I can do it. This could involve things like visualization. And then I would note different values and beliefs that I would have that were disempowering. Okay, maybe I thought that the audience wouldn't accept me. Maybe I thought people will look down upon me and laugh at me. And then I realized I could evolve my values and beliefs instead of saying, oh, the audience will look down upon me, I realize that it's about the audience. And if I create value, then they'll appreciate it. And they'll admire my confidence for being the one who goes up and speaks. See, that's a value and belief that I evolved. Capabilities. So public speaking capabilities. Voice tonality uh, is probably an element in behavior. But if you were to say public speaking, then I took it and I went multidimensional with it. I wanted to get better at speaking in front of large audiences that were a thousand plus, because to me it was a different dynamic, a different sensation than speaking to a small group of maybe five or 10. I wanted to get really good at speaking to a group of five and 10. I wanted to be able to communicate and speak publicly in public. I just want to be able to go up to people and start talking with them. I wanted to be able to communicate publicly on video, on audio, and I wanted to be able to communicate in a way that creates an engaging dynamic between the group. So I had to learn things like how to work with teams and groups of people and 
get everyone to value each other's opinion and so forth. And there was a lot of different capabilities that fell within the scope of public speaking, even came, uh, coming down to conflict resolution, which was a capability. And even learning things like improv. I took improv classes so I could learn how to communicate more fluidly and more dynamically. I learned how to sell and market so that I could become better at influential communication. See, because I realized that there's public speakers, those that could speak in public and sound nice. And then there are those that could speak in public and can influence a decision, a buying decision, an ideological shift. There was a distinct difference. So I had grouped those down into different capabilities and went to work on them. And then, you know, behaviors, voice tonality, body language, smiling, all those kinds of things, being in a flow energy. And then the environment. So environment can be looked at multidimensionally. And all of this can be looked at multidimensionally. What environments can I practice? What environments can I gauge myself to see the kind of progress that I made? What environments are more challenging? What environments are actually easy? And just by being in those environments, I'm not really growing. So all these kinds of things I had to keep into consideration. Also, environment, when it came to public speaking, was based on a direct response marketing principle, like speaking to the right audience at the right time. So I had to know who the audience was and what to say to them. All these kinds of things fell in the scope of the Robert Dills model. So I hope you found this to be very useful and beneficial for you. So I want you to look at, do a little exercise. I want you to sit down and ask yourself, what's your vision? Maybe you already have it. And then go through this video and everything I've discussed and identify within yourself the elements that need to evolve at an identity level. Make a commitment that you're going to note down your values and beliefs and work on them. Get clear on what your capabilities are to bring forth your vision and dedicate time to cultivating those capabilities and evolving in them. Figure out how you can put positive habits throughout the day and perform your capabilities to a high standard. And observe, as it's influencing the environment, the kind of results you're having. That's why it's really important to have key performance indicators and track your progress, measure your progress. And then decide on the optimal environments to practice everything and also become aware of how the environment influences you. So I hope you found this useful. If you want to copy the mind map, the link is in the description. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.